Hello and welcome to another episode of Mob Talks. I'm Mats. The theme of today's uh, monologue, I guess, is uh, hybrids. Not that many years ago, I personally thought, well, hybrids are great because you can go wherever you want. If you want to go on a long trip, and then when you just want to go to the shops, you run on battery power. And then, sort of, suddenly we had electric cars that can do more than just two miles. And then I've driven electric for a while, I've driven different electric cars. Um, so it sort of just left that behind me, and then I had a friend of mine um, over on coffee one day. I had bought himself a new um, Aris, Yaris, one of them. A hybrid, well, all Toyotas now are hybrids, mostly apart from maybe the Lancus Cruiser and that stuff. Um, he and he and, he and his um, his companion had also swapped out their old, old small BMW X3 for a new X5, also a hybrid. Um, so, as I said, different hybrid systems. For instance, the X5 when you if you lift off the accelerator and you go downhill, the the petrol engine is still running. Doesn't need to run, but it is. Uh, while it's in the Toyota, for instance, it doesn't. You just run on a, on, a, on electricity, or rather, you regen on the electric motor. He was very happy with his car. Like it, it had a little bit of power on the on electricity, so. It suits his purpose very well, and it's held in the fuel that up maybe once, uh, once a month. So you have some hybrids which are just there for, which is another way for the manufacturers to put in a tiny little battery and a puny little electric motor, which drives, which maybe acts as a generator and acts as a starter motor, maybe helps a little bit on in the drivetrain. But that's very little other than that, which means that in the old, particularly in the old NEDC test cycles standard, which are now, now being phased out, thankfully, for the new WLTP standard. Take the last, the previous generation X5 and the X3 and all that stuff and the S class and certain other kind of hybrids, which were mild hybrids. Um, they weren't really ever made to run purely on battery power, not in any sense of the real world use of a car. In a, but, in, but in a test lab, they did very well indeed, because they were tuned to those low speeds and all that stuff, so you got readings that were fantastic. Our car runs on point not 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 nothing of petrol, for instance. And in Norway, now there are coming new rules this fall, so around the corner. But they've been very much used to the CO2 component and the power component, different things there. So if you have a low CO2 component, it gets taxed a lot less than if you have a maybe equally powerful but internal combustion engine, which are because it has to. Uh, burn more fuel has a bigger, bigger CO2 rating, and thus it gets much, much, much more expensive. But because these mild hybrid systems are simply a PR trick and nothing else, you're just lying, you're lying to your customers, you're undermining the whole point of hybridization and electrification. Everybody who knows a little bit about this just gets off. I get so angry about it. Yes, the Kia Optima Hybrid is a, all right. That's that's done pretty all right because you get a um, you get an all right range out of it. I don't have the number exactly in my head, but if you get say between 30 and 50 kilometers of real range out of a hybrid, that's good because that covers most of the people's daily driving. So it actually makes a difference. What the uh, owners discovered was that you didn't really get very far on electricity. And if you didn't plug it in every day, which many don't, 
and you're just dragging around a lot of components that are just making the car heavier. It's a bit like having three big people or two big people uh, lying around the car for fun. Um, just making the car use a lot more petrol simply because it's end mode the engine to scale down because we have an we have an electric motor as well so if you add that up you have 500 horsepower you don't have it you will never have and you particularly don't have when the batteries run out of enough power to sustain any meaningful propulsion then all you have is this puny little fossil burning um, machine take the Land Rover this Discovery hybrid now, it has a 2 litre diesel engine or petrol engine in the country, remember, but it is. I think it develops something around in the region around 200 horsepower, which is perfectly alright in, in many of but it is not alright in a near 2 ton big, big box SUV. It's not really enough, and it, it's noisy and it doesn't. It sort of destroys the whole image of. of Glass and the refinement which you normally have in your in your Land Rover product, and the um, the the petrol tank is smaller often as well because you have to make this room for the battery, and all these components have to go somewhere. So you have to compromise either on, for instance, uh, luggage space or petrol tank uh, fuel tank. And so on. It is just. It's unreal and it's unrealistic. Now, if you put in a little a proper battery pack and um, a decent motor, so you can actually go somewhere on electric power. Fine. I understand why maybe for the next few years you would still. Some would still need to have the fossil engine to go to go on really long trips. I can understand that. But let's just hope that uh, the manufacturers wake up and uh, do things properly and stop and stop projecting them themselves as being better than they are when they're constantly being shown that uh, they're not. So that's all for today people. I hope you liked it. Do remember to um, Give it a thumbs up and uh, and uh, subscribe and leave a comment if you have any opinion on things. So, thanks. Bye.